In Galatians chapter 6, Paul closes out the book of Galatians, really talking about the spirit that we need to have when we have to walk in situations where correction is in order. We've all had seasons in our life where we've made mistakes. We've all had seasons in our life where someone had to address us, whether it is a mother and father or a spiritual mother and father, but we've all had to walk through those tough seasons. And let's be real right now. Nobody likes it, but we all need it. And Paul begins to instruct the church of Galatia how to do things in a healthy way when dealing with discipline. I think it's so powerful and applicable for our own lives, especially the first few verses. I don't want you to miss this. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness or gentleness, considering yourself, lest you be tempted also. That's the uh, New King James, King James version of it. I'm going to go into the NIV real quick, but I really just want to share with you the spirit of what he's saying. He says, you who are spiritual or you who see yourself as spiritual, you need to have a heart that's looking to restore. If Jesus came to restore what was lost, we are also called to be restorers in the way that we live. He says, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit, or you who walk with Christ, or you who walk in the gospel of Christ, you should restore that person gently. He told us in another part of the scripture, let your gentleness be known to all for the Lord is at hand. What does that mean? God's watching. Watch how you respond. Watch how you respond. He's going to show you, He's going to share something powerful with us later that we're going to tie back to this in a few verses. Watch how you treat people. He says, watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. It also says, consider yourself, because you also could fall into the same temptation. Different translations will word it a little bit differently, but the premise is you need to be thinking of yourself, because there could be a moment where you could be tempted, and you'll want someone to show you gentleness. You also want to show gentleness and not be prideful so that you don't open up yourself in your pride to the same sin that they walked in. It's two-sided. We need to be very careful. He said, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Basically, he says, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Don't get caught up in pride. Verse 4, each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else, for each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word shall share all good things with their instructor. We need to be careful that we don't get lifted up in pride, that we share with one another what God's revealed to us, not in a prideful spirit, but in a humble and loving spirit. And we need to make sure, and this is the scripture, verse 7, do not be deceived. Don't fall for the lie that the enemy wants to tell you. For God will not be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. For whatever a man sows, he will reap. And if you sow gentleness, you will reap gentleness. If you sow mercy, you will reap mercy. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if you sow judgment, you will reap judgment. Mercy triumphs over judgment. I want to be the kind of leader that shows mercy and gentleness so that when I find myself in a situation where I need it, I can receive it because the principles of the scripture, the principles of sowing and reaping are true. God has set it in motion and it will not change. Whoever sows to please their flesh, verse 8, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. He says, if you sow good seed, you'll reap good seed. You sow bad seed, you'll reap a bad harvest. You have to be careful. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. He says, don't stop being good. No matter what's going on around you, no matter who's saying what around you, no matter the circumstances, continue to follow after the Spirit. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Let's do good to all. Yes, do we want to love on other Christians? Yes, do we want to love on the church? Yes, but we want to love all, always. That's the heart of our Lord. And he says, see what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hands? Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. He goes back to the religion, back to the legalism. He's not letting this go. He says, there are people who are trying to trick you and to trap you. The only reason they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Now, this is interesting because he's really talking about people who don't want to have to walk out what God's called them to walk out. And so because they have a wrong motivation and a wrong spirit, they push people away from Christ and they push people to themselves. 
He says in verse 13, not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that they may boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never be like them. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away. Behold, he has made all things new. The scripture says, peace and mercy to all who follow this rule to to the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. He says, look, don't let these people deceive you. Don't let these people trick you. Don't let them get you caught up in religion and legalism and these and this, this ideology that's not of Christ. He said, you focus on Christ. You walk in the fruits of the spirit. You walk in the fullness of freedom. You continue to do good no matter what's taking place around you. Don't fall back into the trap for we are not of those who are of perdition. I believe this is in Hebrews. He says, we don't shrink back. We're not the kind of people who who run back, he said, but we continue on. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope for he who promised is faithful. I think it's Hebrews 10. I just feel led by the Lord to share this with you. And he talks about in Hebrews 10, how the just shall live by faith. He quotes it in Hebrews. He quotes it in Galatians. He says, the just shall live by faith. At the end of the day, it's all about faith. Not faith in my flesh faith in our Lord. Be blessed today.